Let's see now, I've got this y-axis here, and I've got this x-axis here, and I've got this force. And of course we'll give it a good name, F. That's a good name for a force. This F can be broken up into com its component parts. It has a component that runs along the x-axis. We usually call that f of x. It has another component that runs along the y-axis, and we normally call that f of y. But what if you don't? What if you don't what? What if you don't call this f of y? What if you call it something else? What if you give it a one-letter name? What if you call f of x b? And what if you call f of y c? Well, you might have some trouble now. You might say vector f is equal to b plus c. But you don't know what b is, nor do you know what c is, unless you're looking at the graph. How then do you know? Well, we use something called a unit vector. A unit vector. And when we talk about a force along the x-axis, we refer to it as the i vector, and a little squiggly there. And the c vector along the y-axis, this unit vector is referred to as the j vector. So, how would we deal with this now? We could now say that vector f, the resultant f, is equal to its two component parts, which is b, and then we put the i vector there, plus c, and then we put the j vector here. And that tells us that this guy here, the i vector is the unit vector that represents the vector along the x-axis. While this guy, the j unit vector, represents a force along a vector along the y-axis. So you can tell immediately that the bi vector is the, what do we normally refer to as the f of x vector, and cj is the f of y vector. Huh, what do you know? Of course, of course, it would be nicer if we could make it nice and large so that you can actually see what I'm doing. And this would be the f of y vector. And later on, later on, when you find out the values, the magnitudes for b in the i-th direction and c in the j-th direction, you can replace the b. Let's say it's 10. That would, this would be 10 in the i-th direction, 10 in the i direction. And let's say this was 9 in the j direction. And i direction is like saying in the righty-lefty direction, in the righty-lefty righty direction. j is like saying in the upsy-downsy direction, 
in the upsy downsy direction. I righty lefty J upsy downsy. So if you were to rewrite this using the standard notation we've been using till now, it would go something like this. Here's your f of y, here would be your f of x, and let's say this is your resultant f. And so you could say that f of that, and let's say this is uh, alpha, angle alpha. So you could say that f of x, vector f of x, we'll use the vector notation here. We're now using vector notation, and we're saying f of x in the ith direction is equal to f times the cosine of alpha. And that's equal to f of x in the ith direction. And so you could actually represent this as in this format. Rather than say f of x, you could say f cosine alpha in the ith direction. And f of y could be represented as what? Well, we know that f of y in the j direction would be equal to f times the sine of alpha. But you can represent, you can get rid of this part altogether now. And you can just very easily say f sine alpha in the whoops, not ith direction, but jth direction. Oops, that would get you into trouble. And the jth direction. Yes? Yes. So you can represent f of y, the vector f of y, the, the component f of y, as f sine alpha in the jth direction. We can go further now. And we can represent the vector f as being made up of what? Whoops. Let's clear this off. And this off. And this off. And you could say it's equal to f cosine alpha in the ith direction plus f sine alpha in the jth direction. Yes, you could say this. This would represent the magnitude and this would represent the direction. Well, that's it. So long now.